Hey, I'm Adam Jusko from ProudMoney.com. In this video, we are going to look at the best travel credit cards on the market. Now, if you were sitting right here in front of me talking to me and you said, what is the best travel credit card? I would tell you it depends. And then I would ask you a bunch of questions about what you might want out of a card in order to figure out which is right for you. But since you're there and I'm here, we're gonna have to do things a little bit differently. And that means I am going to break this video down into sort of categories of the best travel credit cards for certain types of people and then you can listen and think what type of travel credit card person you might be and what fits you. All right, let's get started. The first category, best beginner travel credit card. If you haven't had a travel credit card before, I would put you into the Chase Sapphire Preferred because it gives you good value and a ton of flexibility in terms of how you use the points that you earn. So the Chase Sapphire Preferred has a $95 annual fee and almost all the good travel credit cards out there are going to have some kind of annual fee. So you have to figure that into the equation when you look at these cards. Now, as a new card holder, as I make this video, you could earn an extra 60,000 points with this card if you spend $4,000 with the card in the first three months of having it. Those 60,000 points are gonna be worth at least 600 bucks. They could be worth $750 or more when you redeem them for travel. So that is a good way to start things off. In terms of everyday rewards, you're gonna get five points per dollar on travel when you book it through the Chase Travel Booking Portal. You'll get two points per dollar on other travel purchases with the card, you'll get three points per dollar at restaurants, three points per dollar on most streaming services, three points per dollar on online grocery purchases, which is sort of a strange category, and then one point per dollar everywhere else. In addition, every year you are going to have an up to $50 hotel credit when you book a hotel through the Chase Travel Booking Portal. So the first $50 that you spend toward the hotel when going through Chase Travel is going to come back to you. Note that on that first $50, you're not going to uh, get the rewards, but you're gonna get the rewards on everything else. And then once a year, the Chase Sapphire Preferred is also going to give you a what they call a 10% bonus on the points that you have earned over the course of the previous year. And what that actually means is you are going to essentially get a one-tenth of 1% 1 bonus on all the money that you have actually charged to the card. So for example, if you charged $25,000 to the card in the previous year, you would get 2,500 points as a bonus. Now let's talk about how you might redeem those chase points because like I said, all kinds of flexibility here. First off, you could take those points and you could book travel through that same chase travel booking portal that I talked about. When you do that, you're gonna get a 25% boost in the value of those points over what you would normally get if you just cashed them out. So normally that 60,000 point bonus, for example, would be worth $600 if you just took it as cash. But if you use it to book travel through the Chase Travel Portal, $750 of travel is what you are going to get. Alternately, you could take the points that you earn and you could transfer them into one of the loyalty programs of a Chase Travel Transfer Partner. And a lot of people really love to do this. And Chase has good big name partners, including United, Southwest, Marriott, Hyatt, and a whole bunch more. So if you are someone that is already earning a lot of points in one of those programs, this would be a way for you to uh, top up or for whatever reason that you might wanna move points, you can do that as well. So you can book directly through their portal or you can send your points to one of those travel partners and use them that way. Now I just mentioned a sort of regular redemption rate of a penny per point with the Chase Sapphire Preferred because the 60,000 point bonus that we mentioned would be worth $600 if you were or to take it in cash. But that is a point I wanna bring up again because it actually speaks to the flexibility of Chase's points. With most other travel credit cards, if you redeem for anything other than travel, you're gonna get pretty lousy value on your points. With Chase, they give you the flexibility to decide to cash out sometimes if you want to and still get good value for your points. So you can take your points, use them toward travel, but if for whatever reason you decide you wanna take them in cash sometimes, you're not gonna be sort of penalized for doing so, you're still gonna get good value out of those points. 
And then finally with the Chase Sapphire Preferred, if you were to get this card, you might also want to get other Chase cards because you can combine points and still redeem those points for the better value through the Chase Travel Portal or use them with those travel transfer partners. So get yourself the Chase Freedom Flex and you're going to have certain categories where you can earn five points per dollar on different purchases throughout the year. If you get yourself the Chase Freedom Unlimited, you're going to get one and a half points per dollar on all of your purchases that don't fall into one of the enhanced categories that we talked about on this card. So you have ways to earn more points with other cards, but bring them all together and then use them for that enhanced value with the Chase Sapphire Preferred. I wanted to come up with a runner up on the best beginner travel credit card and it took me a while. Ultimately, I decided on the newish Wells Fargo Autograph Journey card, $95 annual fee, five points per dollar on hotels booked with the card, four points per dollar on airfare booked with the card. You don't have to go through any travel portal. It's any uh, travel that you book. You need three points per dollar on other travel, three points per dollar at restaurants, one point per dollar everywhere else. There is a yearly up to $50 credit on the card. If you use it to book at least one flight over that year, there's a 60,000 point bonus opportunity as I make this video. Now, in terms of actually redeeming those points, you can redeem them for cash back at a penny per point, or you could use them through the Wells Fargo travel portal, but you're not gonna get anything extra in terms of the value of those points when you use them through that portal. You're kind of getting your uh, value on the front end in those five point categories and four and three point categories. and then. Wells Fargo does have some new travel transfer partners. They're nowhere near as good as Chase's in terms of the number of them and the flexibility in terms of using your points. But still, if you're someone that learns the travel game over time, you might find that there's good value there too. Now let's go to maybe the other end of the spectrum and talk about the best luxury travel credit card if you want that VIP treatment, and that is the American Express Platinum card. Now this card has a $695 annual fee, and not everyone is going to be right for it, but of course not everyone is a VIP. If you have the American Express Platinum, you are going to get the best airport lounge network from any credit card out there. You are going to get both your clear membership and your TSA pre-check or global entry uh, purchases credited back to you when you pay with this card. So that's going to help you get through the airport super quick. Having both of those, you are going to get a yearly $200 hotel credit when you book with the card in the fine hotels plus resorts or the hotel collection, collection of hotels that American Express has partnerships with. So you're going to get that $200 credit. You're going to get a $100 on-site credit at most of those hotels, I believe. And then you're gonna have things like potential room upgrades, early check-in, late check-out. We recently uh, used our American Express card at the Lowe's Hotel in Miami Beach and got upgraded to the Ocean Front Room, which was not a bad deal. So those are some of the VIP things you get. And that is certainly not all. You've got an up to $15 per month Uber credit with the American Express Platinum. You've got an up to $200 per year airline incidentals credit. You've got an up to $240 digital entertainment credit for certain uh, media that you might purchase. And of course, the points that you get from American Express are also something that you may find highly attractive because American Express's travel transfer partners in particular are pretty good. Some people prefer them to to the Chase card that I was just talking about. So you have Delta, you have Hilton, and a whole lot of international airlines where a lot of people find a ton of value with American Express, especially if they go for sort of the higher grade seats on international flights. Probably the closest competitor to the American Express Platinum when it comes to luxury travel is still the Chase Sapphire Reserve. It is a little more of a practical card, I guess, versus the Amex Platinum, but maybe a little less VIP feeling. $550 annual fee. You've got decent rewards on the card. You have a $300 travel credit per year that obviously is going to make that uh, annual fee feel a little bit better and it is a wide net in terms of what constitutes travel with it. You do 
have an airport lounge network here. Not as good as American Express's, but still pretty good. When you use the points that you earn on this card through that Chase Travel Portal that we talked about earlier, you're gonna get a 50% boost on those points. And again, if you have other Chase cards and you combine those points from other Chase cards into this one, you'd get that 50% boost on those points as well. So that is another nice feature. So the Chase Sapphire Reserve, a nice card, not quite as exciting as the American Express, Express Platinum, but maybe more practical for a lot of people. The next category is what I would call the best all-in-one solution travel credit card, and that is the Capital One Venture X. The thing about the Venture X is you're going to get good value, but you have to make sort of a commitment to Capital One in order to get it. So this card has a $395 annual fee, but there is a $300 travel credit per year when you book your travel through Capital One's travel portal. There is a bonus opportunity of 75,000 points or miles as Capital One calls them in that first year. So at least a $750 value there. You are going to have airport lounge access. You're gonna have TSA pre-check or global entry credit with this card. And then every year you are also going to get a 10,000 point bonus when you re-up and pay that annual fee again, which essentially means you are going to get that $300 travel credit and you're going to get that $100 worth of points every year on your card anniversary on a $395 card. So you're essentially getting $400 worth of value on a card that you're paying $395 for and you are earning points and you're getting airport lounge access. So it is a pretty nice solution except for the fact that so much of it goes through Capital One and so you have to be okay with that. But if you want ease of understanding and you want ease of use and don't want to juggle multiple credit cards and you just want a pretty nice solution, this is a good one. Next up is best airline credit card, and I'm not a huge fan of airline specific credit cards, but if I have to pick one, it's gonna be the Southwest Priority card. This card has $149 annual fee, but between the $75 credit you get per year when you book a Southwest flight with the card and the 7,500 points you get every year that you keep the card, that essentially is going to pay for that $149 annual fee right there, and then you'll get the rewards and the extra perks that this card offers on top of that. If you're not really big into Southwest and you want maybe one of the uh, bigger airlines that flies more places or isn't hopping multiple times to get you where you want to go, well, any of the major airlines have decent credit cards. It really just depends on if you have an airline that you are already sort of beholden to in any way. So Delta has a couple decent cards in the gold and platinum potentially, the City Platinum Select A Advantage card, United's Explorer card, any of those cards that have an annual fee sort of right around the $100 mark are going to be decent credit cards. They're all gonna give you priority boarding, usually the first bag checked free and some other goodies as well. Best hotel credit card, again, I'm not really all that into hotel credit cards in the same way that I'm not all that into the airline specific credit cards, but if I have to pick one, it would be the World of Hyatt credit card, which is a solid travel card, but really, this is more about Hyatt's uh, reward program than it is about the credit card itself, because Hyatt has a lot of fans in terms of people feeling like they get a lot of value out of Hyatt points when they redeem those points for Hyatt stays. Now, Hyatt does not have as big of a footprint as Marriott or Hilton, so you have to take that into consideration. But if you have Hyatt's or you're willing to find the Hyatt's in places that you want to go, oftentimes you can get better value for your points from Hyatt than you can from the other uh, major hotel chains. The best credit card for travel insurances and protections, I would say, is the Chase Sapphire Reserve, which we have already talked a little bit about. You have primary rental car insurance with this card, where most credit cards, it's going to be secondary after after whatever auto insurance that you already have. This card has trip delay or trip cancellation insurance, baggage loss or baggage delay reimbursement and some other things as well. Other cards out there do have certain insurances, but I think this is the strongest. Best credit card for people that don't travel often but wanna earn travel rewards is the American Express Gold Card. Now this card has a $250 annual fee, so you have to take that into account. But you earn points 
on everyday categories where maybe other travel cards are not giving you enhanced rewards. You're getting four points per dollar on restaurant purchases, four points per dollar on grocery store purchases, three points per dollar on your flights, one point per dollar everywhere else. Now, one of the big things that comes into play when you think about that $250 annual fee is you've got two credits that could sort of take care of that annual fee if you can max them out. And up to $120 per year Uber credit, that is cut up into 10 dollars per month and then an up to 120 dollar per year dining credit same thing when you use the card uh, for food from certain places or uh, from uh, grubhub deliveries you can get up to 120 dollars there so that could be up to $240 in credits if you can max those things out. And then you've got a great big bonus on this card potentially as long as you can meet the spend requirement and that's definitely going to take care of your feelings about that $250 annual fee to begin with. But you do have to do the equation and decide if it's right for you. Best no annual fee travel credit card. Like I said earlier, not really a fan of ones that don't have an annual fee, but if I have to pick one, it's probably the Built Rewards MasterCard, especially if you are a renter because you can earn points on your rent payments without uh, having to pay anything extra in order to do so. And you have good travel transfer partners, so you can use the points you earn with the uh, travel transfer partners. And you have decent categories otherwise with this card to earn points in. It has no foreign transaction Fee, so you're not going to get charged anything extra if you use it outside of the country. If you are a renter, that is when this card is really going to look good to you. If you're not, it just looks okay. Finally, I want to mention two cards that don't fit neatly into any of these categories, but they do have their fans. First off is the U.S. Bank Altitude Reserve card, which competes sort of with the American Express Platinum and the Chase Sapphire Reserve. This is a card that has a lot going on, but in particular, why it is so popular popular is because it gives three points per dollar on mobile wallet purchases. So if you do most of your buying that way, this is a card that is going to reward you handsomely for it. And then there also is the Navy Federal Credit Union flagship rewards card, which is very simple to understand. You're getting three points per dollar on travel purchases, two points per dollar on everything else. It does have a $49 annual fee and you have some other perks there as well. So if you really want it simple, that is a card that is popular as well. So that is it for this video. If you watched all of this and you're like, I still don't know where I fit, tell me in the comments what you are looking for and we'll see which card maybe is right for you as an individual. Or if you have any other questions or comments, put those there as well. Otherwise, I thank you for watching. And as always, please go to proudmoney.com where we do credit card reviews. We talk personal finance, we talk deals and all sorts of other fun stuff too. If you're not leaving a comment or going to the website, the next video to watch is right there.